All right, so in the last video, what we ended up doing was creating inside of our widget here two functions that we can call directly from our character and then fire off two blueprint implementable events that we can see here to basically make changes to our total ammo and our current ammo text. So we're pretty much good to go, and honestly, we could really leave it here. However, I want to expand on this just a little bit farther, just one more notch. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking and creating two text boxes inside of our C++ class that we can access and manipulate directly. So that'll remove the need for these blueprint events entirely so we can avoid blueprint basically just all together. So in order to do that, we have to do basically the same thing that we're doing here in our designer and create two text boxes. So if I come over here, we have text, and basically that's all it states that it is. We head over to uh, our C++ classes and go to new C++ class. We go down to widgets. So that would be right, let's see, W. I overlooked it. Okay, now we're in the T's. Where is widgets? Search for text box, here's widget. There we go. We can look through and see basically all of the ones that are here. So we have editable text and editable text box. Should have something related to text box. Okay, I guess it's called text block, not text box. So what we want to do is we want to add two text blocks to our widget. So we know the class is text block.h. So I think that'll allow us to open it up inside of the IDE. Apparently not. But my assumption is we will be able to see it if we do u text block. Yes, we can. So we have our u text block. So I'm going to go ahead and forward declare this at the top. Like so. So I do not have to include it. So u text block. Let's call this one current or tb underscore current ammo. Then we want to make this a U property. Let's just do edit default only. A category I guess we can leave for the time being and then create one more. This one's going to be TB total. If I can spell it right. Total ammo. Now I guess we assuming because it's under components. U widget, U object. Okay, I'm not entirely sure. So, again, this is my first time doing this, so I'm just going to see what happens when we leave it like so and don't do anything fancy with it. So, let's just see. Alrighty, so loading up our widget again, we get a bunch of complaints, so let's head to our graph, and we can just go ahead and close it down and remove our set text. Actually, we can remove our events as well. So, remove... Well, we can't even really remove these variables... Let's try deleting them like so. And remove our update functions. So we basically have an empty widget. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything in here. So my assumption with it is we are going to have to actually create this kind of as a, kind of like we would do with create default sub object. I'm going to look that up and see if that is the correct manner. And I'll be right back. Alrighty, so after doing a decent bit of research, what I have found is you have to set it up to be binded as well as you actually have to create the widget, well, the component portion, as a, uh, uh, what's the word? Well, one that mocks up with the same name. So I'll kind of show you what I mean. So ultimately, what we're going to end up doing is set meta equals bind widget. And then we want to carry this over inside of, well, our blueprint. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out total ammo, and we're just going to work with current ammo for the time being. So again, nothing new or anything here in the CPP. Now let's go ahead and relaunch. Alrighty, let's head back into our widget. And you will see here I've actually completely cleared it out. So there is nothing in here anymore, no functions, no anything. But when we go over here... Uh, you can see a, a required widget binding tb current ammo of type text was not found. 
So the reason for that is we have not bound anything to it. So for example, if I drag this text out here, this text block, and compile, we still have the same error. However, if I rename it to tb underscore current ammo, so tb underscore current ammo, compile and save, the complaint goes away. So right now it's labeled as text block. What I want to do is, I believe there's an, I don't know if it's initialize or what, but we'll just do native construct. So let's go ahead and override that function. Again, this is optional. I want to be removing this shortly, but if tb underscore current ammo, what we're going to do is tb underscore current ammo, set text, and then we want to set the text. So f text, I don't remember exactly how to uh, construct an f text, but I'm just going to do from string for the time being. And let's just search for this should be changed now, like that. Recompile and relaunch. And with any luck, when we construct it, we should see the text of that text block being changed to whatever we set it to right in here. So wait for this to finish loading. Reopen. Here we have our text block. Let's hit play. And now you can see it says this should be changed now. So we can also override this in the pre-construct and make changes that way. And I noticed there's also a function here called synchronize properties that should help aid in that kind of stuff as well. But for the time being, that is not what we want to do. So let's mark these the exact same way. So we have our TB total ammo and our TB current ammo. And what we can do is set this up. So on fire, what we're going to do is tb underscore, well, let's do an if first. So if tb underscore current ammo, just to confirm that it's valid, we want to set tb current ammo, set text to what we're going to pass in to the event. Just like that. So same thing here. If tb current ammo and tb underscore total ammo, we're going to do the exact same thing. So tb underscore total ammo, set text. Then the text we want to set is that for total ammo. Then we can remove those two delegates or those two bindings and remove them from there as well. So now let's compile or let's relaunch. And once we're back in here, let's reopen and we should have the same complaint of type total ammo. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And this one's going to be tb underscore total ammo. Compile and save. And there we go. So now I have them both like so. When I hit play, current ammo 30, total ammo 240. And everything is working as it is supposed to. So now we just got to reorient them. So they're anchored to the top left. So set this to negative 1.5. That's a little much negative 1. And then negative 0.5. Same thing with this guy, so negative 1 and negative 1.5. Now let's do negative 2.5. Bond save. And there we go. We now have our total ammo and our current ammo set up and functional. And everything's being driven through C++ however it is being adjusted visually inside of the editor. So we don't have to do any sort of manual positioning or anything like that. And this gives us about the most efficient route that you can go. So every time we fire, for example, or every time we reload, we access our HUD directly and we call our on fire or on reload, which directly accesses our text blocks and sets the text on them that way. So this has been just a very short series on kind of the basics of ways that you can go through and optimize. I picked this kind of setup because I thought it would be the simplest manner. Because I know not a whole lot of people, including myself, honestly, this is, like I said earlier, this is my first time actually ever touching, you know, working with widgets inside of C++, period. So I had to do some learning and figure out the whole binding thing. But I figured a lot of people are probably in that same boat, so that would be an easy adjustment to come over to this, as well as ways that you can see Maybe, okay, I was doing this that way before, but this would be a much more efficient route to take in my case. So 
just ways that you can really go through and step by step say, okay, I can optimize it and improve on my efficiency this way. Okay, then I can expand on it again this way, and then this way, so on and so on. So this is my fifth video in the series. So the first improvement we made was instead of making this being bound and update on every tick, we made it event driven. So anytime we would shoot or reload, it would then update. Then we remove the casting requirement from doing it from the HUD. So we would get our first player character, then we would cast it to our character type, then we would construct the string, and then we would uh, convert that string to a text to be set to these text blocks. So that's what we've removed just the casting part here. Then in the part three, what we ended up doing, or sorry, and part two, we removed the casting part as well as we did a uh, another section in it at towards the end where we remove the construction of the strings and converting them to F text from inside a blueprint. We move that over to simple C++ functions, which we later on were able to remove thanks to part three, which cleaned it up. So part three, we created this class here that we are currently using and we set up some simple functions. So we set up our on fire. Actually, I don't know. No, we didn't actually set up anything. I don't think. So that's probably why. And then in part four, sorry, I'm getting myself a little bit confused. Part four, what we ended up doing was we set up our on fire and our on reload functions to be called. And then we set up our blueprint implementable functions right here, our blueprint implementable events right there. In which case we would then bind these events. So for example, on current ammo changed or something like that, whatever it was called, that would then fire. In which case we would directly set these text blocks through that. So we would adjust them that way. And then finally, we are here at this video where we are now actually adjusting or setting all that information directly through C++. So we're creating our text blocks because we know we need two for one for current total and one for quote, yeah, one for total and one for current ammo. And we just simply access them directly. So we no longer need the we no longer have the need for events or anything like that. We can just snap a fingers, go right on through. So that pretty much sums everything up. Uh, the only thing actually, so if we head over to the graph really quick, I didn't think about this until now, uh, you will notice we don't actually have them accessible. So for example, our two text blocks here, set them as variable, go to over here. We still don't have it set up is where we can access it. So even though we check TB total ammo or TB total ammo as a variable, we still can't do anything with it. So what we need to do, even if we go over here and we show inherited variables, go to variables, we don't have them in here. So what we need to do, if we can actually uncheck this, compile and save. Let's go ahead and close that down. We need to set these as blueprint read only. So if we set or we do blueprint be read only not read write to both of these we can then gain access to them to where we can edit them as if they were normal blueprint variables so here you can see there neither of them are is variable however come down here under youtube hud we now have a new section under variables so we have to make sure show inherited variables is set otherwise it won't appear we now can drag out, so here's current ammo. We can get it, but as you can see, I cannot set either one of them. So we'll hit play, everything's still the same. But what I can do is set text, set it to blah, 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 compile, save, and hit play. It's still set the same. Actually, let me do a delay, because I think we're being set up bad at the right time. So hit play. As you can see, it just changed and updated itself. So you still have the ability to edit these through your blueprint if you so wish to. You just gain the ability of accessing everything directly as well. So you're not limiting yourself in really that kind of sense. So and I'm just kind of clicking through these and seeing what all they do. But you're not limited to them being visible. So or let me rephrase that. You're not limited to only accessing them through C++. You can do either just kind of the same thing as you would with normal U properties inside of your actors, for example. So that pretty much wraps up everything that will be covered in this series. 
uh, now that I'm starting to kind of get into working with widgets inside of C++, I'm going to definitely be doing them more for myself. Like, that's guaranteed. I just see it, honestly, it, honestly, if you're making a C++-based project, I don't see any reason to not create your widget using a C++-based class. Because that there alone allows you to just access everything that you would need directly through C++ instead of having to kind of do the workaround where you would have to go from C++ to Blueprint, then access it directly through Blueprint, if that makes sense. So like what we did in the beginning where we had a C++ variable or value that we wanted to change inside of our widget or that we wanted to get and use that to change a, you know, the text block inside of our widget. So we had to basically inside of our character Blueprint First, let me phrase that. Inside of our C++ character, we had to fire off an event that triggered inside a blueprint. And inside of that blueprint event, we had to then pass that information along to the widget blueprint. And then inside of there, we had to set it. So this way, we can just call these functions directly. And worst comes to worst, we just bind events to fire off whenever, you know, that happens. That way, we don't have to even worry about setting these up through uh, we're setting up our text blocks, our canvas panels, buttons, all that kind of stuff through C++. Instead, we can still do them through Blueprint and just make our lives easier by firing off events to perform things that we want to happen. And then if we have any sort of, let's say, heavy code that needs to run, we can simply make a function for that. So like void my heavy code, or just say it like it returns something. We could just have that right here inside of C++ call it through our widget blueprint directly, no problem, it would just be a U function, and that's it. It would just simplify our lives a lot easier instead of having to go through and do something like create a blueprint functions library, and then access it through that. Because this, again, gives you access to most things that you would need. So what I've been reading up on is a lot of people, they seem to all kind of have the same mindset of this. They put the bulk of their logic inside of C++ inside of their widget, and then that way, they any changes, any iterations they have to make over top of the widget, all they do is make those changes in the editor. They're just updating it visually. However, like, you know, adding buttons and stuff. However, all of the core logic that they're going to be using is still going to exist, and they don't need to rebind it, rewrite it, or anything like that, or make any more spaghetti than they need to inside a blueprint. They all just have it directly accessible and callable from inside of their C++ class. So uh, I'm pretty sure I'll end up making more videos on working with C++ and widgets because this is actually a little bit kind of, what's well, it's kind of fun. But until then, that is going to be all for this series. And obviously, if you're familiar with how I do things, patrons have access to this first. Uh, I don't know why I'm saying this considering this is the end of the series, but anyways, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that is also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.